the slide, hunger cues from um, baby. So just seeing the baby, being able to see the baby, also you can see whether it's like, oh, the, the cue that they're starting to get hungry feeding me or when they're really like, you know, overly, because you know, I overslept because the baby was crying in the beginning. I didn't, I didn't hear the early cues as much. Um, but then by the time I hear the baby, it's very late. The baby is really like kind of color turning red a little bit. Mm -hmm. That's when you really have to pick up the baby, mm -hmm. um, calm them down first yes. before attempting to breastfeed them. Don't just immediately try to breastfeed them in the beginning. Yeah, I, th I think I think a, when they a, lo a lot a lot of the knowledge, uh, more common knowledge, is um, that crying indicates that the baby is hungry. But Not um, but but crying is actually a late stage hunger hunger cue. Mm -hmm. um, and I and I think um, what happens is that we see on TV, you know, that the baby cries and they're like, oh, time to feed the baby. But you want to try and get to the baby before they cry. Yeah, before they cry. So, and if they do cry, calm yeah, them down. Yeah, and calm them down because mm -hmm. um, an agitated crying baby. Um, can, can cause nipple damage and mm. um, can be too agitated to, to latch, um, which then stresses mum out yeah. <laughs> as well. So um, basically um, we want to feed baby on request or on demand, mm. um, you know, as often as baby indicates that they want to be nursed. And I kind of say that, um, you know, the early stage hunger cues is baby waking up mm. and starting to move. So yeah, this was, you mentioned also, this is something that we didn't talk about before, but lactation consultant, is a term that is loosely used nowadays, yes. right? So you have to make sure the lactation concern is certified by the IB, or is it? Yeah, International Board Certified Lactation Consultant, so IBCLC. IBC. So this is the gold standard for lactation consultants because anyone can call, can call themselves a lactation consultant mm. and it doesn't, you, you, you have no idea how much training or if any training that, yeah. that, that they've, what they will do home visits um, and they are medical professionals. So um, a lot of them are midwives or yeah. nurses. Yeah. Um, mine even, yeah. um, I, I didn't know they did this, but mine even weighed the baby. It was a week after we came out of the hospital. She came, mm -hmm. she checked my latch. It was correct, but yeah. just now again, I kept having that difficulty. Mm -hmm. um, she checked the baby's weight and then, then she started asking me questions. I was like, wait, why are you asking me questions? But it's the whole postpartum checklist yes. that they were doing, which is really good. Yeah. You didn't think, you don't think about these things, but sometimes you, we just take it for granted that, oh, we just had a baby, so we're a little emotional and yeah. stuff. But having some of medical professionals yeah. check that off. Yeah. Is very reassuring yeah. as well. Yeah. And, um, yeah. And, and they can be great. They, you can ask them questions about parenting in general. And One of the, the biggest questions that I see in like our, our breastfeeding groups on Facebook and such um, other than supply, which, you know, the more you feed, the more supply you'll get, because um, that's just the way the, the breast produces supply and demand, is um, going back to work. Because they're stressing about supply because they're thinking, I have to store a, a certain amount of breast milk yeah. in my fridge for when I'm not here, my baby might go starving if they don't have, like, you know, a certain amount of milliliter in my in my freezer. So yeah, I mean, I think part of it is social media. We see on Instagram and Facebook all those, you know, pictures of freezers full of full of milk. Yeah, people never have done stuff. Plus, they... who, who no longer has a freezer that big? <laughs> I know, I know, some people buy a freezer yeah. just for breast milk, but still, like, that's a big. Yeah. No, none of us has a freezer. Yeah, that but big. you don't actually need that much. Um, um, you know, at a minimum, you need a day. Uh, you need enough for the first day back, um, plus a, a little bit extra in case of an emergency. So mm -hmm. an emergency is something like your caregiver accidentally spills the milk while they're preparing it, which... Crying over spill milk is a, it's a real thing. Yeah, which, sure. <laughs> which is, which is, which is heart, heartbreaking, but, but oh, it happens sometimes. Cry so hard. Yeah. The first time it happened to me, I remember. Yeah. It's like all that effort, you're like, yeah. oh my gosh. Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah, or, you know, maybe you forgot your milk that you pumped that day at work. <laughs> <laughs> but that's also, you know, so... That's all, all very, very typical things you'll yeah. go to, so no we, matter how careful yeah. you are. <laughs> so we suggest, you know, uh, one to two days um, worth of milk because um, once you go back to work, uh, the milk that you pump on the day will be fed to the baby the next day. Mm -hmm. So the milk you pump on Monday will be fed to the baby on Tuesday, Tuesday. and the milk you pump on Tuesday will be fed on Wednesday and and so on. So um, yeah, so you don't need to have a huge stash. And um, often the mothers sort of like um, spend all their time pumping and trying to store up, you know, a, a, a freezer stash. 
um, and forget to enjoy their maternity leave and bonding with their baby and and, yeah. and then you can overwork pump too right, as well yes yes yeah, so if you pump, pump, pump too often um yeah it can cause oversupply which you know for a lot of mums that sounds oh that sounds <laughs> great but, no it's very painful but, but when go before going back to work it's always good to go in and talk to your hr rep or your supervisor mm. um, to discuss uh, what accommodations um, they have in place or, or that you need mm -hmm. um, for pumping at work because um, it's, it's a health health issue for for for, um, for women um, and I think a lot of a lot of employers, particularly in Hong Kong, sort of don't quite understand that that um, if a woman doesn't pump regularly when she's breastfeeding, um, it can cause engorgement, it can cause blocked ducts, it can cause mm -hmm. mastitis, it can make you actually quite unwell yeah um, and also can affect your breastfeeding journey yeah um, which we don't want I mean, once you feel stressed out you feel like that's the one thing too mentally um i think all women feel like they're they're bothering the company mm. but you're not bothering no. the company look you're you're hired to do yeah. your job and you can do your job while breastfeeding yeah. at the same time yeah. it's not it's not like detrimental we, we us women can multitask a yeah. lot you know yeah. and i I, for me, um, they, my company was too small at the time. They didn't have a room. So what I did was I blocked out the conference room every day at a certain time. And that was my hour of relaxation. Um, yes, I do relax in there. What I do is I bring my phone in and I read on my phone or I bring my Kindle in and I read. Yeah. Because that getting into that, that relaxation, mm -hmm. that 20 minute of pumping, that relaxation yeah. really helps out well. And um, sometimes, sometimes, not all the time, and I don't really recommend this, but I bring my laptop in and I actually have to send emails because unfortunately sometimes something's urgent come yeah. up, you know? Um, but yeah, it's yeah. it's not, it's, you know, it's your right. Yeah. And I'm so happy now that we have these laws. Yes. The new laws is, in yes. place to make sure that yeah. we're not harassed. Um, yeah. If a manager can't understand yeah, it, yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah, and so um, the best um, advice I heard from a working mom was to go in and tell, the, uh, tell your company mm -hmm. what you need. Um, to facilitate your pumping so um you know you, you need regular breaks every two to three hours mm -hmm. um ideally for 45 minutes because mm -hmm. that gives you enough time to set up your pump and yep. pack it up afterwards pack it up put it yeah. in the fridge yeah. make sure there's fridge space there yeah. that you have yeah. a fridge there to store your milk yeah. and for me um my advice would be get a good pump yes Yes. Get a good power yeah, pump. A good double pump. Double. Yeah. Don't do one. I was like, where are working? I was like, no, you don't want to spend your time doing one side and then the other yeah. side. Just get power, uh, you know, double sided. Yeah. Get a nursing, I'm not nursing, a pumping bra. Yeah, a hands free so hands you don't, pumping bra. Your hands yeah. don't have to be holding it. I was yeah. like, it's so tiring. Yeah. That's really helpful. Yeah, yeah a and comfortable chair is very, very key. Um, and also um, taking snacks water yes and water I, I, hydrate yourself yeah. for sure Breast, pump, breastfeeding definitely makes you thirsty <laughs> yeah so have a big bottle of water bring that bring that into a view it's yeah. very key yeah um yeah i think those are just basic necessary stuff and you'll yeah. you'll and if you forget something you'll you'll remember the next yeah. time you're like oh i gotta do this that yeah and a, and a support group is great um there's a few whatsapp groups out there of yeah. pumping mums mm -hmm. uh because I, for a lot of mums it can be quite isolating because you're not doing you know you're missing out on the socialization aspect at work and you're not you know sitting in the lunch you know share with your colleagues that you know that your breaks are for pumping mm -hmm. um just so they know that this is something that needs to be done and yeah. is important yeah and I, I you can pump anywhere too by the way yeah. i once had to take a uh, train ride and i pump on the train i just got a nursing cover because i was in front of my male colleagues yeah. and they they weren't as comfortable of course <laughs> you know that's like it was weird yeah. but like for me i i put the yeah. nursing cover on i was just sitting on a train and pumping along yeah. the way yeah so like you do what works for you be mm -hmm. being inventive you know innovative yeah. and get a nice cooler with some blue ice pack yes that's, yeah. Uh, yeah. so you can transport yeah. your milk from work yeah. to home and transfer your um, bottles and stuff over as well yes that's yeah. great and and um if you're having if there's multiple pumping sessions um sometimes having two sets of um pump, pumping flanges yeah. can, can be helpful because um you know there's not always time to rinse off the um the the pumps, yeah so. But I just put mine in the fridge, fridge yep, and I then, just put it in the bag yeah. and put it in the fridge, keep yep. it cool and then you can yep. use it for a day. But there is those women who forget something, I, I've done it before, we forget bottles, we forget something, <laughs> you know, mommy brains, yep. it does exist. Um, 
reach out to these Facebook group supports and stuff because I've seen it happen so many times. Like, I am essential. Uh, where can I go pick it up? Someone will, will tell you, oh, I have a extra set or go yeah. here, they'll sell it. Yeah. Um, so later on, we have all these resources that we can show you as yeah. well um, that will be posted on the website. Yeah. And, and and being inventive um, is is a, how you said is a, is a very good point because yeah, I put, put uh, the bags yeah, on instead yeah, of the bottom. Yeah, I've seen I, that happen. Yeah. I've seen I've seen mums um, rinse out their water bottles <laughs> and put the milk in there because they forgot to bring some storage bottles. Yeah. And also about um, storing uh, storing milk um, for going back to work. Um, I think it's important to make sure that you have uh, differing sizes of. Um, of, of milk so, so but once something you know sizes that are full feed so about 90 to 120 mils um, mm. um, for, for your caregiver to give to your baby and then some smaller um, sort of 30 to 50 mils mm. snacks um, oh. yeah, in, in case baby is having an extra hungry day oh. um, or a growth actually yeah, yeah. Barbara, that's a good advice having yeah. the extra bottle and explain to yeah, the yeah. caregiver like you can get yeah. these extra extra yeah because mm. um you know uh, you don't want them to defrost an entire bag if baby's only going to drink a tiny, yeah, yeah, tiny yeah. amount. And I mean, it's very uncommon for a baby to take, mm. um, you know, two full feeds yeah. at one go. So, they, but they do have some growth spurt, so they need a little extra boost. And yeah. that's 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 the good type of top up you should yeah. do, not the other top yeah. that we'll talk about in yeah. the myth. Yeah, and and definitely. Um, look at um, teach your caregiver how to do pace bottle feeding which is a way of uh, feeding a breastfed baby with a bottle um, to make sure that they don't develop um, bottle preference or nipple confusion mm. um, so um, this means that um, you hold baby upright you have the slowest flow teat on on the bottle yeah um, you take regular breaks um, so it mimics breastfeeding a bit more yeah. because um, often, you know, uh, babies are like anyone else uh, and bottles are, are, are easier than getting milk out of the... Yeah. If it goes and, really fast for yeah. them, they're so used to it. They're yeah. like, why do you have to work for it now yeah. on mom's boobs? You yeah. know? Like, why do you have to suck so much harder on the breast just yeah. to get the same amount yeah. of milk? And so that's when they prefer yeah. the bottle. And you can also um, accidentally overfeed by um, because the bottle continually flows. Yeah. Um, mm. So, you know, they're getting up and the and a baby has an innate sucking reflex so they will just keep sucking it down and, and women say oh but you know the baby seemed really hungry and he just took it all and stuff like that um well part of that is because um you know if they don't swallow they choke yeah uh, and also because they have that strong sucking reflex they just keep keep sucking so if the milk keeps flowing um really fast um yeah. and then they expand the stomach yeah. really big yeah. and then the next time they're going to need more. more yeah they're going to and that's when sometimes the, the, that's what we call a little bit overflow yeah overfeeding, feed, overfeeding and then and then that causes stress for mum because the caregiver says i need more milk mm -hmm. and mum is like but i'm only pumping this yeah. amount exactly <laughs> thing. and a lot of times yeah. i find like then they might not just be hungry afterwards it's like my kid yeah. afterward he's full like yeah. you can feel his stomach is like yeah, full, yeah. but he just wants a sucking. He yeah. wants continuous sucking. So yeah. I, I do give him a dummy yeah. um, or his cloth and he kind of suck on that a little bit. And he's yeah. like, okay, he's satisfied. Yeah. But he just needs that little comfort yes. as well. Yes. Not just That's the right. just the comfort. comfort yeah. 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 And so yeah, and, and I think a lot of, also a lot of a lot of caregivers sort of just interpret any sort of fussiness to mean hunger. Yeah. hunger. Yeah. Um, so they sort of need to start to think about baby's cues and try yeah. some other ways to to soothe them as well beforehand yeah. and stuff like yeah. that so, so those classes i think are very important too to yeah. put not just you to go antenatal but there is antenatal classes as well for caregivers so if that's something that you're you want to try that's uh something that's you know can yeah. be helpful as well yeah so we talk about going back to work because like that, that dreading going back to work is the one main thing and being prepared i think it's very key mm -hmm. um let's talk about the myth buster that's like the thing we want to, I want to push as well. Um, there's so much in misinformation out there. The one I heard the most was, oh, my breasts are small. So that's why I'm not going to be able to breastfeed my baby. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, so what happens to all the other malnutrition women <laughs> in the thousands of years ago? <laughs> like we all, but we have it. It's very rare. Yeah. Like maybe less than 1%, like point something 7%. Yeah that we can't breastfeed because there's something physically or mm -hmm. medically wrong with our yeah. breasts. Um, there's things like inverted nipples and things like that, but they're an uh, instrument to help out, right? Yeah. So very rare that you could get those cases, but they do often happen. You can always get a checkup medical yeah. pressure, but everyone can breastfeed pretty much. Yeah, they yeah. just, um, often, um, you know, mothers um, don't get the support 
that they need um, from knowledgeable people at the beginning. So mm. um, they, they feel that they that they can't breastfeed um, when it, when in fact they just haven't had the, the right help mm. um, to help them accomplish it. And yeah, and for some some women it is it is incredibly hard in the beginning. Yeah, um, and this is um, this is why we aim to sort of like reach out to mothers and you know give them information to to help them along their breastfeeding journey. Yeah. Things like that, um, but breast size has nothing to do with how much milk you can make. Yeah. Um, yeah. So small breasts can make a ton of milk, and large mm. breasts can can you know make make less milk than some small breasts, and vice versa. Yeah. Um, That's you, you can't tell what by looking at it. I mean, there is there's such a thing. There's something called storage capacity, which mm. can vary between women. So you may hear of uh, of you know a a a woman whose baby is only feeding every few hours um, on one breast mm. and um, you know sleeping longer stretches and stuff like that and um, often that's because she has a large large storage capacity mm. um, and you know um, and any storage capacity is small large medium storage mm. capacity you can you can successfully breastfeed your baby yep. um, exclusively yeah um, it's just that uh, if you have a smaller storage capacity your baby may need to feed more more frequently so it's more like smaller meals mm. more frequently so the same the amount of milk in 24 hours is what's important mm. um and you know it's it's the same with it's like having having you know filling a bathtub with the cup versus filling a bathtub with the bucket so yeah, yeah. yeah. so yeah. yeah and i think that the stress is what's really key about yeah. that is that you you once you tell yourself i can't do it it's like mm -hmm. a mental thing once you say yeah. i can't do it i'm not able to do yeah. it then you really push yourself off as yeah. well yes um yes the other myth i heard which i got told a lot was that um i i breastfeed both my well not both yet my first one, I breastfeed for 26 months. The second one, I'm I'm still breastfeeding. I'm hoping mm -hmm. to hit the same milestone, 24 to 26 months. And the reason why is because World Health Organization does encourage us and recommend us to breastfeed for two years. Mm -hmm. But a lot of people are mindset thinking, or they what they hear is, oh, six months. Is it only six months? Why are you breastfeeding over? Yeah. Six months is exclusive breastfeeding. But you should continue, if possible, to keep breastfeeding up to two years, especially especially if you have a inherent um, what is it called um, something that you can pass on to your kid. Like for me, asthma. My kids have asthma. I have asthma. My husband has asthma. So definitely, our kid has the asthma gene. Breastfeeding for two years really suppress that. Yeah, and um, yeah, you can. And uh, the actual the natural age of weaning um, for. Mm -hmm for humans is actually anywhere from two to seven years of age. Yeah, so if you do continue yeah, breastfeed, think, it's only, especially during COVID now, yeah. it's only added like, you know, nutrition, added antibodies yeah. that the body needs to yeah. fight off anything we're facing yeah. right now. Yeah, and I think for, for a lot of women, it, it seems uh, quite bizarre because we don't see a lot of older children nursing. Yeah. Um, but also um, the fact that um, nursing an older child is very different from nursing a newborn mm -hmm. so a newborn is solely reliant on you for you know as entire entire nutrition mm -hmm. um and you know your milk is is the only only food that they're getting yep. um but with an older child um it's more about comfort yep. and um and a little extra nutritional boost and um yeah that that helps them so they're not nursing you know around the clock eight to twelve times mm -hmm. times a day not the older child they're yeah. just more like just comfort and just yeah. getting a little bit but that yeah. little bit already helps them yeah it, it might be just once or twice a day for an older child mm -hmm. um, and that still provides a lot of benefits for both you and and your and your baby mm -hmm. so, yeah. yeah and then the other myth we talk about um babies fussy um, so that they, they they meet more milk, right? Yeah, that was the one yeah. I spoke about. As well. Yeah, so um, fussy evenings and your breasts feeling empty, uh, which leads a lot of women to feel that they're not making enough milk in mm -hmm. the evening, so they need to top up. Um, with either formula or express breast yeah. milk. Topping up with formula is like the yeah. ultimate no-no. Which, um, yeah. you know, can, can derail um, your breastfeeding, breastfeeding journey. Um, but, you know, fussy evenings are very common, particularly particularly from about two to three um, weeks of age mm -hmm. to maybe about three, three months of age. Um, yeah. And, you know, your baby is fussy, um, you can't seem to console them no matter what. Um, and this is very, very normal. Um, 
that, and they may want to just nurse for hours in the in the mm. evening and your breasts feel empty but um rest assured um your breasts are never fully empty uh, yeah. they're always exactly could keep that can, 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 can continue yeah. making milk and um, empty breasts make milk faster than fuller breasts mm -hmm. uh, because there's a feedback loop. Um, when your breasts get too full, that slows down production. Mm -hmm. So it's much, um, so, you know, even if you have to switch baby from breast to breast to breast, yeah. um, you know, and it's for hours, it, it's, it's nothing to do with your supply. It's just to do with the, the yeah. natural um, behavior yeah. of, a, of a baby. But sometimes the baby is just, um, they're full. Yeah. You can feel like the stomach is yeah. full, but they they constantly want your breast because yeah. they're comfort. Yeah. So it's not, it's yeah. not because they want to drink Yeah. So, so a lot get. of, a lot of comfort nursing. I mean, one of the things that I hear a lot is that baby is just using you as a pacifier, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. which is, which is not the case. Um, a pacifier is an artificial boob. Yeah. Um, so your baby is using your boob as a boob. <laughs> <laughs> The, the, yes, the, 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 yeah, the breast, the breast is, is the original pacifier, mm -hmm. so it is incredibly normal for them and uh, not at all a bad habit to let them just comfort nurse on you. It, it releases oxytocin. Nicola, uh, Nicola, we can just go on and on about this. There's so many different things. Uh, maybe we'll bring Nicola back for a second um, session. But if you need help, contact for help is right here. Um, Lily Lee has also came out with a book, The Womanly Art of Breastfeeding, so something for um, you to read. I, I, a comprehensive guide. Yeah. In addition to that, we have more research such as the Hong Kong breastfeeding group that Gemma runs is amazing. We are all supportive of each other. I've been in that group for almost five years now from my first child to my second one. It Tastes Like Love, um, a great campaign that's trying to normalize breastfeeding in public um, and also just breastfeeding period, normalizing yeah. it. Kelly Mom, great. I love Kelly because, you know, uh, Lalisha Lee is here in Hong Kong and I think you guys are wonderful, real life superheroes to help us moms out. Because without you guys, just like, you know, just not knowing where to go. Yes, Facebook or friends and stuff is easy, but talking to you, being able to WhatsApp, be able to talk to you on the phone and be like, this is what I'm facing, you know, yeah. getting that advice, giving that reassurance. Yeah. I think it's golden and yeah. it's key. Thank you. So we hope this has been helpful for you. Your breastfeeding journey it makes it a little bit easier. And of course, um, you know, not everyone's breastfeeding journey is the same. So don't feel like you're out of the ordinary. Just call for help, contact any of us. Even if you call me and ask me for my <laughs> breastfeeding, I'll, I'll give you my tips or I'll tell you, hey, maybe you should go to who for help, you know? Mm -hmm. it's, it, is, it takes a village. It really does take a village. Whether you know, raising the child or breastfeeding, we all need support. And right now, especially when we're all kind of isolated because of COVID, this is the time to ask for help and don't be afraid to do so. So again, we hope these parenting talk series are helpful for you. If you have any further questions or have other topics that you want us to interview experts about, feel free to message us. Thank you, everybody, and we'll see you next time. Bye. Okay. Oh my God, I, I think we went like 40 minutes. Mm -hmm. so, there's so much information to Oh my gosh, yes, I know. Stop sharing.